Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration. Most of the music this morning will be very familiar to most people, but the psalm is, I think, only sung on this day. So let us make sure we can fulfill our, the expectations of the Holy See by singing the response. Here's how it sounds. It's on page four of your book. And the response will sound much better in the Mass because Nathan Neen is singing it. I'm about to sing it. And you will find out why I'm playing the organ and not singing. But here it is, here's how it goes. The words are, my soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. And it sounds like this. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. And you sing, my soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. And now let's do that successfully. And you sing, my soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. And we'll try that one more time. My soul clings to you. And you sing, my soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. So at the responsorial psalm, that is our response, and we are to respond. Please, of course, feel welcome to join in all of the congregation we're singing this morning to suitably support this wonderful feast of this state and of this nation. Thanks for your time. I'll leave you with some quiet to pray and prepare for Mass.
My name is Tiara Musro and I'm a proud Virapai woman. It is important that we acknowledge the mobs connected to this place, the Jagara and Turbal peoples. We pause for a moment in silent acknowledgement. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We extend this respect to other Indigenous and non-Indigenous elders, leaders and role models. We acknowledge country to give recognition to our ancestors, the people who gave us this land to cherish and look after. It's about paying respects to the oldest surviving and thriving cultures in the world. Acknowledgement is about celebrating the un our unbreakable connection, our formal traditions, and remembering the important historical sources of teachings we pass from generation to generation. The knowledge of our lands, the knowledge of our waterways, the knowledge of our ancestors, and the knowledge that lives within our spirit. As we gather to share in community, may I respect the endless knowledge forever embedded in the Aboriginal custodianship of country. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Stephen. Today is the feast of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, Australia's first saint, born in Melbourne, 1842, and died in Sydney on the 8th of August, 1909. Responding to the isolation of colonial families, she pioneered a new form of religious life to provide education for children. She and her sisters shared the life of the poor and the itinerant, offering special care to the destitute women and children. She is remembered for her eagerness to discover God's will in all things, for her charity in the face of slander, and for her abiding trust in God's providence. We give thanks for the Sisters of St. Joseph and all those in the Archdiocese of Brisbane who educate, support, and care for those in need. In the words of Mary MacKillop, God loves those best who help the weak become whole. St. Mary MacKillop was a person of great faith who trusted God to care for her and provide for her. She was a person of action who, when she saw a need, did something about it. We are called to be like Mary, to be people of hospitality and welcome, to be people of action. <coughs> Today, we seek to carry on her legacy through the Mary MacKillop Brisbane Catholic School Access Fund. This is a perpetual endowment fund established to give children whose families are facing significant hardships an opportunity to receive the gift of a Catholic education. This fund will be the recipient of the offertory collection today. There are envelopes for you in the pews and donations will also be accepted after Mass at the MacKillop Fund stall. Our principal celebrant for today's Mass is Archbishop Mark Coleridge and the clergy of the Archdiocese of Brisbane in the Catholic grounds. As part of the procession this morning, students and staff from Mary MacKillop College will bring forward items that represent the life and work of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop. School books. Mary's contribution to the education in Queensland is a lasting legacy we give thanks for every day and in every moment we spend with our teachers and students at school. The dotted feminine cross represents Mary's connection with her sisters, the children, and the pe people whom she served. Ultimately, it represents her connection with God. Rosary beads. Mary was devoted to her faith in prayer. Her prayers and devotion sustained the sisters and Mary through the many challenges she faced. Mary's letters. Mary was a prolific writer and her letters are a lasting reminder of the daily work she engaged in. The suitcase. Mary spent many hours traveling rural Australia. She brought faith to the people who were most isolated and who most needed the sustenance of faith. The college candle. This represents the light of Christ. As St. Mary MacKillop said, there where you are, you will find God. The college banner. 
It shows the powerful connection of the Celtic knot, the triquetra, which symbolizes the community and Mary MacKillop's lasting legacy. Please rise for our opening hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Together we walk humbly in the footsteps of Mary MacKillop, following her who followed Christ. He it is who stands in our midst as she does. She's not once upon a time, and neither is Jesus. So it is the Lord himself and Mary, his disciple, who welcome us to St. Stephen's on this great day. I welcome in particular the sisters, the daughters of Mary MacKillop, each of them a living portrait of the woman who founded them. Mary was a sinner found by God and a sinner who therefore became a saint. We too come to Christ like her as those who have sinned 
but in him we find the Holy One who offers the gift of mercy. So let's, on this feast day, greet the Lord Jesus as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the God who is with us have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Pray now in the silence of our hearts. O God, source of all goodness, who have shown us in Saint Mary a woman of faith living by the power of the cross. Teach us, we pray, by her example, to live the gospel in changing times and to respect and defend the human dignity of all in our land. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. First book of Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, up and go to Zarephath, a Sidonian town, and stay there. I have ordered a widow there to give you food. So he went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, please bring me a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go ahead and do as you have said, but first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some for yourself and for your son. 
For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she, himself, and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. As the chosen of God, the holy people whom God loves, you are to be clothed in heartfelt compassion, in generosity and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive each other if one of you has a complaint against another. The Lord has forgiven you. Now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, put on love, the perfect bond. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together in one body. Always be thankful. 
Let the word of Christ, in all its richness, find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And whatever you say or do, let it be in the name of the Lord Jesus, in thanksgiving to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, that is why I'm telling you not to worry about your life or what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. Surely life means more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Can any of you, for all his worrying, add one single cubit to his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his regalia was robed like one of these. Now, if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much look more look after you, you people of little faith? So do not worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are we to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. 
Your heavenly Father knows you need them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness, and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. Excuse me, sniffling and sounding rather husky, but I'm sure Mary McKillop must have had a cold at some stage of her life. <coughs> if so, I'm in very good company. For quite some years here in Brisbane, there was a little museum dedicated to Mary McKillop down in the sisters' house in Annerley. The sisters eventually decided to move from that house and the question was, well, what would happen with the museum now? We discussed all the various options and we decided that there should be some, well, if not a museum, at least a memorial of some kind here in the cathedral precinct. We have the remarkable statue of the saint in the chapel, but we felt that the precinct itself, where so many thousands of people pour through day in, day out, that this was the place for some kind of memorial to Mary McKillop, not a museum, because she's really not a museum piece, but some kind of memorial that was very much in her style. And when we pondered her style, and when I say we, it was the sisters, as well as the diocese, and all kinds of people had their say, we decided to put in the precinct the Mary McKillop walk, which in one sense we launch today on this her feast. It's the window with its displays that change from time to time. Then there's the little area, the gathering space that we're calling the plaza. And then there are the medallions set in the pavement that tell the story of Mary from her birth to her canonization, a trail which leads you into the chapel where you pray in front of John Eliot's remarkable work, the statue of the saint made from tough old Aussie wood. The memorial that we have placed there is absolutely of Mary MacKillop. And let me say why. First of all, there's nothing grand about it. It's wonderfully simple. It could hardly be simpler. It's not a museum designed to impress. It is humble. It is simple. It's modest. And in that sense, very Aussie. We don't do the heroic style in this country. For whatever reason, you go to Canberra and there in the avenue leading up to the War Memorial, you'll see a whole swag of memorials of one kind or another. None of them in the heroic style that you find, say, in Washington, D.C. The Americans, being empire, tend to do the heroic style. The monuments of Canberra, by contrast, could hardly be more modest. Mary is heroic in some sense, but it's not conventional heroism. And nor is this her memorial. It is quite modest. It has about it, however, an elegance. I'm not saying that she herself was an elegant person in any conventional sense. But if you can't see in Mary MacKillop a profound spiritual elegance, you don't know the woman. The kind of elegance that is genuinely spiritual 
because it embraces prayer, forgiveness, trust in the providence of God, faith suffusing everything, courage in the face of suffering. That's the spiritual elegance you find in Mary MacKillop, the elegance which is echoed in the memorial that we have placed here in the precinct and at the heart of the city. The memorial is also welcoming, by which I mean inclusive. Mary wasn't fussy about her friends, and I presume she wasn't all that fussy about her sisters, nothing personal sisters. <laughs> but this is a precinct that welcomes everybody, and surely it's one of the glories of the Archdiocese for that reason. Speaking of a church that opens its heart and its arms to anyone, you can walk through, we don't ask for your ID, we don't ask for your baptismal certificate, come through, this is your space, as much as it is ours. And Mary was a woman of the passing parade. Some of her closest friends and collaborators were not even Catholic, which was most unusual at that time. So the memorial is for everybody to see, to use, to walk over, to do with what they choose. Being an outdoor memorial, it was designed to be resilient and she was nothing if not resilient. But only with that resilience that only faith can confer. And then it's a prayer walk. And how can you begin to understand Mary MacKillop unless you see that prayer is the matrix of all that she was and all that she does, did, all that she is now and all that she does now because she doesn't cease to pray. How could the woman of prayer set prayer aside? And that's why we trust in the power of her intercession and call upon her in this diocese as patron. And God knows in this land, and in the church in this land, at this time of immense challenge and change, fools we would be if we didn't call upon the prayer of this woman and journey with her into the depths of prayer. To accompany the prayer walk, this remarkable and rather beautiful booklet has been produced. I'm not sure that there are copies for everyone, but it's no ordinary booklet because it doesn't just have words and pictures, it has those, and splendidly so, but it also has what we call QR. I don't even know what they stand for, but it's one of those things that you you sort of put onto a machine and it talks at you and tells you the story. So one of you girls from Mary MacKillop College, and you are very welcome, would you tell me afterwards what QR stands for, please? But anyway, this is a remarkable production, and for those who do the work, the walk, I recommend strongly that you take this booklet as your companion. But there was one particular text among the many that caught my eye. And it's a text written by Sister Patricia Bowman. But they are words, surely, that would sit well in the mouth of Mary MacKillop. And they are these words. Spoken, one might imagine, at the end of her life. She dies on this day in 1909. I have lived these footsteps with my sisters, and now that we have clambered them so far, we see the ocean of time stretching forth, and who of us can know where its waves will wash? For the road through time can be built only by those whose time 
it is. Mary MacKillop, in so many ways, was utterly a woman of her time. And in some ways, she may seem alien at certain points to us because of that. But when the church canonized her, what the church said was that Mary MacKillop belongs to every time. Built by those whose time it is, the 19th century was Mary's time, but so too is this century, the 21st. She's a woman of every time, and she's a woman of every place. And that's why as we gather in this holy place, at the heart of the city, and at the heart of the church, we entrust to her on this feast day, not only ourselves, Surely each of us does that. But we entrust to her prayer the power of her intercession, the Archdiocese of Brisbane, of which she is the patron, and the church in this country, as we set forth on the path of faith, which is the path of prayer, towards the plenary council that Mary would surely have understood were she to walk into this church right now, she may look a little strange, but she would surely feel utterly at home, one of us, as she has always been. And that's why we place in her hands ourselves, our schools, our diocese, and the church in Australia. Let's together profess the faith of the Apostles and of all the saints. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We trust that the prayer of Mary goes with us as we open our hearts now in prayer. Let's then turn to the God who listens and pray in the power of faith. the church, inspired by the lives of the saints, will be ever alert to the direction of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world unite in their efforts to work for peace and justice for all people, especially those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sisters of St. Joseph may be richly blessed as they continue the work begun by St. Mary of the Cross 
and that others may be inspired to join them. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those entrusted with educating our future generations may be visible examples of St. Mary MacKillop's faith, love, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who generously support St. Mary MacKillop's vision for enabling children in need to access Catholic education and those who receive its benefits continue to be a blessing and a witness to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those places experiencing drought may be blessed with abundant rain through the intercession of St. Mary MacKillop. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Australians may be inspired by St. Mary MacKillop to welcome strangers and to be generous with all that we have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rejoice forever with all the saints at God's table in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who in these changing and challenging times direct our hearts, Hear the desires of those who cry out to you this morning. Receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Sacrifice. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As you gather us, O God, at your holy altar on this feast of St. Mary of the Cross, grant, we pray, through her intercession, that what we offer with praise and petition may strengthen us all in love and faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example by communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ your Son. And so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints. We sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. saints, we pray as the Lord Jesus himself has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we receive, Lord God, on this feast of St. Mary strengthen us to walk the way of the cross and bring us to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Both my book and the Master of Ceremonies have said that I should launch the Mary MacKillop Walk, but that's well and truly done, isn't it? I hope so. So consider the walk well and truly launched, and if you can grab hold of one of those booklets, try the QR and see what happens. Someone said, we hope it's more reliable than Queensland Rail. Uh, Bishop Ken used to work for them, he tells me. That explains a great deal. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has made this moment what it has been. It, it's a, an unforgettable and unique occasion every year. So thank you particularly to the musicians, Anthony, and to the singers who have been quite magnificent. So thank you very much to them. To the many girls of Mary MacKillop College, which last night won a special award at the Catholic Education Excellence Awards. It won sort of well, the Oscar, I suppose, for Best School of the Year or something. I, I forget what the title was. Well done, Mary MacKillop. <laughs> the Josephite sisters, of course, are renowned for their morning teas. So we are putting on probably the biggest morning tea in Brisbane this morning in honour of their founder. So you're all invited. It may have to be the multiplication of the loaves or like the first reading where jar of meal was not spent nor jug of oil. But you are all most welcome and I'll see you there. The Lord be with you. Through the example of St. Mary MacKillop, May you learn to recognize God's will for you and trust in God's providence. May Mary's life of service awaken in you a deep respect for the poor and a passion for justice. May you share in Mary's courage, see with her vision and love with her heart. And may the God who is love bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you everyone for your attendance this morning. My name is Pam Betts and I work for Brisbane Catholic Education. Thank you for joining us for this great celebration of Mary MacKillop, who continued to inspire us in Catholic education through her humility and courage every day. Thank you, Archbishop Mark, for leading us our celebration this morning with Bishop Ken, Bishop Joe, Monsignor Peter Manelli, Father Branley, and the priests of the Archdiocese who joined us today. I honour the Sisters of St Joseph who have joined us. I make no secret of the fact that I am a proud graduate of one of their schools and still value and remain eternally grateful for the education that they provided me at Our Lady's College, Annerley. Thank you, sisters. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Could I also acknowledge Carl Morris, who chairs our Mary MacKillop Access Fund. Carl is a great supporter of Catholic education and deeply committed to providing Catholic education to those who would otherwise not be able to afford it. It is great work, Carl, and we thank you. And we thank all those who also contribute to that wonderful work. And what about our musicians? Aren't they fantastic? Anthony Young. And Bree. I'm getting to, Anthony's giving me instructions. Anthony Young from St. Lawrence's College, Bree, who is our wonderful music teacher from Mary MacKillop College, Carly, who is instrumental in organising the Mass, but also the members of our own music choir from Brisbane Catholic Education, Nathan and Steph and Kim and Anna and Laurie and Mark and Keith. Please give them a round of applause. And of course, the wonderful choir from Mary MacKillop College, weren't they remarkable? <laughs> and to Christine Clark and all of the students of Mary MacKillop College, you inspire us every day to do the work we do in Catholic education. We want to give you a future that is hope-filled as we teach, challenge and transform to give you a chance at becoming the person that God created you to be. Thank you so much for being here to represent the 72,000 students in our Catholic schools every day in the Archdiocese of Brisbane. Thank you. Thank you, Christine Clark, and to the teachers who have, and staff who have supported you to join in this celebration and to remind us of why we get out of bed every day to go to work. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your morning tea, and we hope to see you next year. Thank you.